Oh, come on. Let's give Jesus one more praise offering, please. Save me hunger. Oh, no, you sound pathetic. Say, say to me, hunger. Are you hungry tonight? You want the prophetic tonight? Save me again, hunger. Okay. Tap your neighbor, say, tonight God's going to touch me. Oh, no, 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 no. You sound like Pharisees. Tap your other neighbor, say, tonight he's going to touch me. Tonight I change. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to believe what you're saying. Look to your neighbor again. Touch them. Say, tonight he's going to touch me. Tonight he's going to shift things around. Oh. Come on. I want you to believe what you're saying. Touch your neighbor again. Say, tonight is the night. He's going to fill me with power. He's going to fill me with authority. I want to burn with fire in this night. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you want to burn with fire? Mm. The Bible says He came to baptize us in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Are you there? Do you want fire in this night? I need hunger to produce fire. So Father, that is my cry in this night, that you will bring forth your fire in this place. That Father, as I lay my hands on your people in this night, that Father, that the mantle that I carry, the authority and the power that's with me, that Father, that in this night, that Lord, that I may ignite every gift that is in this place, that not one gift will stay dormant, not one gift will stay resting, but by the touch of the hand of the prophet, that Father in this night, every gift will come ablaze, every gift will come on fire, in the name that's above every other name I pray, for it is under one name, the name of Jesus Christ, the only living God, the only true God, and Father, I thank you in this night by His power, by His authority resident inside of me that a fire will be birthed inside of your people in this night that we may walk in true power, in true authority, in true Holy Spirit fire. For the world will once again know not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of God the Lord for I see a movement of God from the east to the west and the north to the south I see a movement of the Holy Spirit that people have not thought about I see a movement over the planet and sons and daughters will come from afar I see thousands and thousands coming in to the kingdom of God in this hour for I say to you my sons and my daughters I have called you unto a time such as this you are my Esther's you are my John's you are my Peter's you are the ones that I've called for a time such as this do not fear do not fear for I tell you the truth he that is with you is much greater than anyone that can be against you but in this night there will be a new fire that will come to you and you will start to dream dreams for I tell you the truth I unlock provision for you in this hour I tell you the truth I unlock peace to you and your enemies will not know what has come to them your enemies will fall to the side for they will know I am the Lord your God I am the Lord your God for I have removed the name of the one that has slandered. I have removed the name of the one that has come against you. And I put my name higher than any other name. And he that trusts in the Lord their God shall be delivered from every evil and every foul. For I tell you the truth, the Spirit is about to move all over this planet. And you have been called to be a part of of this come on oh come on
Oh, give him a shot. Oh. Oh, bump your neighbor again. Tell him tonight is the night. Ah, oh, can my team please bring me water? Oh, I can feel the fire of God on my body. Are you ready to get from God? Oh, oh. what a wonderful, wonder, wonderful experience to feel His fire running on your bones. Mm. Why don't you lift your hands where you are? I'm going to prophesy just now. There's a movement coming, sons and daughters. There's a movement coming. If I've looked for my children, I've looked for them. I've walked and I've looked for my children. For I've sent Isaiah's and Jeremiah's. I've sent them within your midst. send my prophets into this hour and the spirit of my son shall rest upon many in this hour for they will know that they will know that there is only one God for I say to you you that hunger and thirst after me blessed are you for you will know that they will have an abundance in every area of your life. Blessed are you, the hunger and thirst of righteousness. For I say to you, you shall be filled. For I have sounded a call. I have sounded a call. I have sounded a call for souls. And so many that were put to the side I will raise up in this hour and many that man has overlooked I have not overlooked for as I was of Samuel when he chose the prophet and the king or when he chose King David so I say to you there's many of you that man have not looked at you and thought you can do great things for me but so I say to you I do not see as man sees I do not look as man looks. For I've chosen that what the world has despised. I've chosen that what the world has cast aside. For do not even worry about yesterday, for that is under the blood. But I tell you the truth, worry about tomorrow and be concerned if your name is in the Lamb's book of life. For time is of the essence. And now I say, come near to me, draw near to me, come closer. For I want to give you that what you do not know of. As I've said to my son, and as he has said to you, as he has said to you, there's many things I want to tell you about which you do not know of. And if you do not understand earthly things, how will you understand heavenly things? And so, but I've called the people into this hour to draw closer unto me. And they will know me, that I am the living God. And they will know that I am the God that answers by water and by fire. I am the God that answers by fire, by water, and by the wind. And they will know me, for I will sweep across your land as I've prophesied to you. And I will sweep across your land from the north to the south, from the east and the west. And there will be pockets of revival all over your nation. And I see a time in your future now where your sons and your daughters shall fall on their knees and they shall call on my name. And I will bring healing and I will bring peace and I will come like a gentle dove and rest upon you. For they have said, shall Africa shall die. I tell you the truth, shall Africa shall not die. Shall Africa shall live. For my spirit rest on your nation. Your spirit, my spirit rest on your nation. Do not fear. 
Do not be concerned for the fire of God will touch your nation and every man that has planned any wicked thing shall be destroyed in my, in my sight for I am the Lord, your God that do not slumber nor sleep I say to you, watch, 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 watch for the time is here Father, we lift up your name we thank you for your name we thank you for the power of the name of Jesus the Christ. I pray, Father, in this night, in this atmosphere, Lord, that something will break loose in this night. Father, I pray, even as I see right now, Lord, I pray, break off all the things that hinders, all the things that holds back, all the things that restricts, and all the things that restrain. For Father, I take off your people in this night and ask God that the righteous shall be able to enter in so that they may know you, the only living God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus just a praise offering again. <clears throat> Amen and amen. You're welcome to be seated. I sabroshtere, You know, borobotrobostere I um, I actually must just prophesy sabroshtere I want to. I I don't actually want to speak. I just want to do. Um, and uh, I pray my voice hold. I actually didn't even think I'm going to shout, but you know. You never know until you hear. So then we shout, Amen. But um, <clears throat> I I need to be at the place tomorrow, so so I'm trying to preserve my voice because um, this just things happening. But I've come from a we were in the UK just now, and we were with some friends there, and we saw God doing amazing things. And you know, I again just saw that how much you need to understand power and authority because there's something like real power and there's something like real authority and you need to have both in the kingdom of God and you need to have both of these things because if you don't have if you have just one and not the other you might be in with man but you're going to be in trouble with God are you there and so oh come on save me hunger Come on, I know tomorrow is a public holiday, so you can all sleep late, so I can prophesy to 12 o'clock tonight, and you're all going to be here. Save me hunger. So I want to share with you very shortly on, on something that I, I started to discover on authority and power, because I have been asking God this question quite a lot about Lord show me deeper things about authority and power because when I was in the United Kingdom um, you can ask Pastor Yerik he was there with me I would walk between the people and whenever the demons saw me they will fear me they will tremble they will literally start to shake just by looking at me the religious people are not afraid but the demons are it's quite interesting um, because demons understand authority and power but anyway, so as I was walking between them, many of them, you know, they were shaking because they were afraid. And, you know, for many of them, we just, you know, kind of tried to calm them down. But you really can't calm them down. But it's amazing that the demonic entities, they understand authority and power. They understand it. They recognize it. And so as I was walking there and we were, had the privilege of casting out many many devils which is so good because who of you know the bible says cast out devils heal the sick raise the dead so it doesn't matter what god has called you to do if you if you are a businessman then be a businessman raise the dead heal the sick cast out devils if you're a doctor awesome still raise the dead heal the sick cast out devils if you're here as a beautician then awesome still raise the dead heal the sick cast out devils and proclaim the good news it doesn't matter what he has called you to do. What matters is that you do what the kingdom says you must do. Amen. So while I was busy 
busy year, you know, they, they had in this church that I have been looking after and giving a lot of leadership input into to get them healthy because who of you know that God wants healthy people. So you need to stay with me tonight. Don't go and sleep now. So just if you see your neighbor trying to sleep, slap him and say, be awake because you might just, your life might just change tonight. Are you there? So if, they, if you see that spirit of slumber, slap that spirit right out of them and say, the Holy Ghost is going to touch you. I'm teasing, okay? But, but I, I, saw, I saw when I was there, I saw how once again that you can become very comfortable without knowing the real God. Hmm. Because if I have all things, why do I need God? But do you know, it is not the things that I have that is the sum total of who I am. But it's who He is in me that defines me. And so anyway, we were there and, and one night, very specifically, it were, I had a privilege. There was a lady there. You know, I don't know why people do this, but God bless them. They, it was real awesome. I had, a, I, have, I had a friend there. I guess I can call her a fan. I don't know. But she, she drew a sketch of me and she put it on Instagram and she presented this sketch to me. It was such a, really a good drawing. Um, I looked older in it. I was like, no, this doesn't look right. But anyway, it was a very, very, very good sketch. And so, <clears throat> long story short, later on that night, I ministered to some people there and they just renovated the they started to renovate and upgrade the stuff in the church and by the way does the foyers not look good and uh, and get ready for some more upgrades are coming inside here and we i'm doing everything because we want amen so my long story short they were doing they had new carpets in and i said to them listen i'm gonna cast out devils so bring a bag because you've got new carpets and they were thinking i'm joking I'm, I said, I'm serious, bring her back. And they were like, uh, okay, and, and so it was too late. So I cast out three devils that she spat there on their carpet. And I think they, they still want to send me like a cleaning bill. But you have to understand, I'm just saying that because I want to share with you that power and authority sets people free. You cannot encounter the king and not be free. To be free means you are a friend of the king. To live bound means I have not let the kingdom come in. As soon as I become a friend of God, I cannot stand on the things he hates. Well, when I become a friend, I need to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Are you with me? And so I, I started to ask God this question, Lord, what is this thing what is the, the connection between authority and power, healing and miracles? Because I see Jesus doing this in the Bible and I want to understand it. Save me hunger. I see you already sleeping. Slap your neighbor. Say, don't sleep other pastor. Don't sleep tonight. We're going to have an awesome night. So, the, I'm serious. We need to stay in a place of hunger. Hunger is one of the laws to pull God into this atmosphere. Okay? So say again, hunger. No, no, no. Say like you believe it. Hunger. Okay. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. There's a promise. They shall be filled. Please note that. They shall. It's a command. What is the prefix to the command? Hunger and thirst. So if we don't hunger and if we don't thirst, He's not going to fill it, even though we can. So I was starting to ask God this question, what is the connection between healing, miracles, power, and authority? Because this is important for me. I want to understand this stuff. Um, because who of you know, who of you know, it's interesting. I want to throw something out at you. Who of you know, when Moses stood with God face to face, he did not ask God to show him his glory. He said to God, Lord, teach me your 
ways. Interesting question for a friend to ask. He was not after the things of God. He was after the way God works. Because he understood if he catches the way God works, he will unleash God. Christians today are asking the question, God help me, God supply to me. No, no, no. God show me your ways that I may follow it. Mm. I'm going to teach you a principle tonight. Are you hungry? So when Jesus healed people, what is the connection? Where is the connection here between power, healing, authority, miracles? Here's the connection. When Jesus healed people, he did it under authority. Healing, and listen to me, I'm just going to read it and then I'll explain. Healing is the removal of something. Authority is, the, is then the healing side. When Jesus did miracles, he did it with power. And miracles is the creating of something. And miracles are the power side. So authority is the healing side. Power is the miracle side. Um, so we can say it like this. Uh, let me just read it again for you that you catch it. Healing is the authority side. Miracles is the power side. So Jesus used both. He used power and he used authority. And I, and, I, and I don't want to go too long because I want to prophesy. There's people here that need words. And I'll, I'll give it to you. But there's a connection here. When did he use power and when did he use authority? And it is interesting in your Bible, I skipped that scripture altogether. But the Bible says that they say this about Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter number 8 verse number 7 to 9. They say... They, no, apologies, Luke 4, 36. They say the following, Luke 4, 36. Luke 4, 36, guys. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word this is, with authority and with power. He commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So they mark, please listen, they, they mark the ministry of Jesus with power and authority. Not just power and not just authority, both. So what is authority and what is power and how are they linked? So again I say authority is linked to healings. Miracles is linked to power. Okay? So if a person, let's use a sickness as an example, he did miracles with his power, but he performed healings under authority. When Satan was casted out of the heavens, he was casted out because of disobedience. When man lost his place in the Garden of Eden, he lost his place because of disobedience. Correct? Now, what we, what we by a lot of time misunderstand is this, that when Jesus healed and he did it under authority, what that means was this, he took a illness that was based under another one's authority and by a higher authority, he removed the rights to inflict that pain. So authority works on the basis of your proximity to the one that has given the instruction. Power works on the pure gift that is given you for the assignment. Power makes you legal in this realm. Authority makes you legal and power makes you legal with God and in this realm. Okay, now listen to me. Jesus said, I come to you under my Father's authority. In other words, He does not come to Satan based on his own power he could but he didn't he said this he said i come to you under my father's authority okay and i think it was hard for jesus to be it was harder for jesus not to be tempted 
as what it is for us not to be tempted. Because Jesus stands here in front of Satan. And Satan tempts Jesus in Mark, Matthew 4. And Jesus must have thought to himself, you are trying to tempt me, but I made you. Can you imagine the humility? In actual fact, Jesus emptied himself so much of his God abilities that they didn't even recognize him. So he knew he's going to take out the devil not by power, but by living under authority and by completing the assignment in obedience under authority, he will take back the keys. And I'm going to show you this just now. I want to stretch you a little bit deeper. The word Satan is not a name. It's a title. Satan's name was Lucifer. But if you study scripture as I've done now, Satan does not have a name anymore in the Bible. God doesn't give him any name. He just gives him titles. Devil, Satan. He doesn't have a name. God has removed his name. In actual fact, the, the Hebrew word for Satan is the word Ba Satan, which just means title. <laughs> it doesn't mean name. It means title. Okay? Now listen. If you understand that he has just a title and not a name, then you understand if he doesn't have a name, then he doesn't have authority. Oh. You want to go deeper? <clears throat> so if he doesn't have a name, he doesn't have authority. What does he have? Power doesn't have authority has power the Christian does have power because of the Spirit of God that lives inside of you and I'm gonna lay hands tonight on you and if you don't have I'm gonna give you some power but for you to operate legally you must have authority authority comes by proximity to the one that gives the instruction okay now it is interesting that when Jesus sent the disciples out, He sent them out with power. Why? Because He was under authority. And as long as they stayed with Him, they were covered. Oh, I don't know if I can go deeper with this stuff. If you look into the satanic world, the number one thing they will ask you to have is covering. Because covering means no access. The, so let me use another example. Uh, Gabriel and Michael, Michael fights with, with, with a prince. It's power against power. But then it's for Michael to win the battle, he submits himself under authority. He says... I rebuke you in the name of the Lord, your God. He says, the Lord, your God, rebukes you. So, for Michael has real power. Satan, real power. Because, listen, God gave Lucifer power and then he became Satan. He didn't take the power back. He took the authority away. So, for Michael to win Satan... He went and he just aligned himself under authority again. And as soon as he was under authority, it was God coming onto the scene and taking out the one that's not under authority. Are you there? <laughs> so, whenever Jesus, and it's amazing, 95% of the time that Jesus did, did healing in your Bible, it is the word healing, therapeo, which, which means 95% of the stuff he did 
was under authority. Only 5% of the time he used his own power. Why? Because only fake power needs to use it to make a statement. Because when you have authority, you are already known. Let me give you an example. Lord, you do not need to come under my roof. For I am also a man under authority. Because when you have authority, you have already have power. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to that one, come, and he comes. So Lord, just release authority. And Jesus likens that man's understanding of the ways of God to great faith. <laughs> you see, we, we have always been taught that you get, you, get authority by, uh, you get power and authority by striving. It's wrong. You get power by the one that already dwells inside of you and your relationship with that one. But then your real authority in the Spirit comes if you stay under submission to the higher force. That is why, let me use an example, that is why every single one of you here is dependent on breath. For you to sit here dependent on breath automatically needs to show you you must be a person under authority because you are dependent on a higher source to live. The arrogance of man is we have forgot breath. Without it, we have no life. It's true. Come on, are you with me? So, the power was legitimate. So, in, in Mark 7, 20, for example, in Matthew 7, 21, just an example. The Bible says, they, they come to Jesus, they say, Lord, Lord, we've casted our devils, we healed the sick, we raised the dead, all these things. And Jesus says, go away from me, you evildoers, for you had no authority. What does it mean? Yes, you match power with power and you won. But I don't know you because I didn't send you. So the things that we will give account to for God is not the things that we did in His name. It is the things that we did under instruction in His name. Because when I call on the name of the Lord, I am calling on the highest authority in heaven and on earth and on under the earth. And all of the demonic and spiritual realm understands that when I call on that name, they listen to, to the relationship between me and that name. So when they look at you and they look at me, they do not question power. They ask the question, is there authority? Because when they tried to cast out the devils of the, of the demoniac, they were, they were trying to use the right stuff, but without authority. Come on, are you there? Are you with me? Say, say with me, hunger. So Jesus looks at authority. He doesn't look at power. Power is important, but authority and power, they need, they need to work together. So let me say it like this. In John 5, verses 43, they're going to have it up for me just now. Jesus says this, I have come with my Father's authority, but you have not received me. So, when, however someone comes with his own authority, John 5, 43, you will receive him. Let me just read it again. It's okay, guys. Go for me so long to Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 5, uh, John 5, 43, let me read it again. I have come with my Father's authority, but you have not received me. Now, when someone comes with his own authority, you will receive him. Now, here's the secret for you. Jesus and Adam, I'll, I'll, I'm going to draw, I'm going to almost come to a close, but I, I want us to do something and I'm going to prophesy as well. So save me, say, say hunger. Look to your neighbor, say hunger. 
Stay hungry tonight. So, when Jesus, and this is important for you to understand, Jesus came under instruction. He submitted under the Father's authority. He came and he was tested by Satan that lost authority when he was disobedient to God. But, and Adam lost obedience when he was disobedient to God. So now Jesus comes in obedience to God and he lives a life under authority. Okay, now I want you to understand this. He dies on the cross under authority. God puts his own son in the grave under authority. And remember now, he has emptied himself of his Godhood, his, his God attributes, and he's a man. He didn't die as the son, he became the son. He died as the, the, the son of God, but as a man. He is the man God, God man. In other words, he emptied himself of all his divinity when he hung on that cross. Because if he would call on his divinity rights, the Bible says more than 12 legions of angels would have come. So he never tapped into the source that was behind him. Because the son learned obedience by what he suffered. So under authority he is on the cross, he dies. He goes into paradise. He walks to Satan. I want you to see that there was no fight between Satan and Jesus. He walks to Satan and says this. Man lost authority the day they disobeyed God. You lost authority the day you disobeyed God. I have not disobeyed God. I've remained under authority. Thank you for the keys of Hades, Hell and the Dead and the grave. Because Satan understands legally he cannot hold it anymore because he's with sin. Jesus says, I'm without sin. So you have to relinquish what is mine. You cannot hold it. There was no fight. There couldn't have been a fight because Jesus was under authority. He simply walked in and he said, give it to me. I'm, I'm a man sinless. You sinned. Adam sinned. I didn't sin. Give me the keys. And then Jesus made Satan watch. He went to paradise. He preached to all of those people. He said, I am the promise that all of you have waited for. I am the fulfillment, Matthew 5, 17. Now come. And then he led a crowd of witnesses into the heavens to show Satan and all the people that how a life looks like under obedience. Oh. And if you have power, it's one-sided. Authority makes the difference. So when I was, for example, in the United Kingdom, I could cast out because I'm under authority. Authority doesn't need to roar. I was, I was just standing, you can ask, Pastor, I was standing there, people were trembling four meters away from me. Why? Authority. I understand authority. And if I live sub in submission to it, the Bible says, at the end of the day, I'm anyway going to report back to authority. But I want you to see this. I'm not going to throw it out again. Satan has no name. The word bar satan means title. Oh. The Bible speaks, can I go deeper? No, I don't think you want it. No, you guys, you guys don't look hungry. You like comfortable. So if you're comfortable, I'm going. I have a beautiful wife at home. Are you hungry? Do you want to? Okay, now listen. The Bible speaks about three dimensions of darkness. Darkness, outer darkness, total darkness. Darkness, outer darkness, total darkness. Three dimensions. When Lucifer was in the presence of God, what gave him beauty was God's authority over his life. 
But the further away he goes from God, he became the prince of darkness. But then the book of Revelation tells you they will cast some of this. And in actual fact, if you read Job and you read the Revelations, you'll find that the further they go away from God, it becomes outer darkness and then absolute, complete darkness. In other words, the further they depart, and this is the point, from the time that Satan was disobedient to God, he started to go into darkness more and more and more. And it's interesting that when God deals with the world, He will cast you into outer darkness. If we don't believe in the Son. Why? Because He deals with full judgment on the full scope of what Satan has done. And the real, uh, I don't know if I can even share some of this stuff. But the, the deepest level of darkness is there's no light. You can't see. It's absolute no life, no peace, no hope, no joy, no light, nothing. And the Bible says that, and go and study this, what I'm saying, that eventually man will look upon Satan one day and him in his state and say is this the one that made all of this mess because he will be scripture tells us through the prophets he will be in a shriveled state because of out outer darkness are you there are you with me now listen 2 Kings chapter number 3 verse number 26. I'm, I'm coming for a landing and then we're going to pray. And we're going to lay hands. Save me hunger. No, 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 no. Say hunger. 2 Kings chapter number 3 and verse number 26. It is the, it's my slide. 2 Kings chapter number 3 verse number 26. 1, 2, 3. Oh, come on guys. 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 26. It says, when the, when, when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom. But when they could not prevail, next verse, listen, he took his firstborn son who was to succeed him and offered him as a burnt offering on the city wall and there was great fury against the Israelites so that we, they withdrew and returned to their own land now listen what happened here is a, it's a falling God gave a word to Israel he says you will win the battle they started to fight the battle God is on their side the enemy sees that they are busy losing he, and the enemy is under dark authority, by the way. He goes and he goes, offer up his own son as a, as a sacrifice or as a price or as a reward to his own God. And God says, because you have out-honored, because darkness out-honors you, I am switching sides because again let me say God says in his word show me your ways the king of Moab understood a way a law in the spirit the law was to be under authority the law was to honor authority which resulted in power. Let me say it again. The king understand the law of authority, the law of honor to authority, and the result is power. And when that king 
out honored the people of Israel. God said they have activated the right law. In they have activated the right way. So now I'm switching sides. And I will fight against my own people. The only time that God will switch sides. Listen, the word that God has given over your life. He can switch sides on that word. No. Oh. Isaiah 55, 11 says this, No word that I proceed out of my mouth will return unto me void. But if we do not treat the word, which is Jesus with honor, He switches sides. The word that He gives you will fight against you to take you out, to put another one in that will believe Him so that He can fulfill His word. Oh. It's true. So whatever we do in this life, must be under authority and must be under power because Jesus himself said only those that do my father's will ah are you with me only those that do my father's will not power those and it is power but I, I wanted to show you tonight that power does not prove to you that God has given his approval What proves to you that God has given His approval is the traits of the Son. Because no servant can be higher than the Son. Are you, are you there? Are you with me? So let me wrap all of this together to you. They said about Jesus, What is this that we hear in His voice? What is this power and authority? That with a one word, demons come out. What is this? What is this when he walks? Wherever he walks, people growl at him and hisses at him. Listen, his only problem was the devils. In, or let me say it like this. The, the people that were broken flocked to Jesus. Why? They saw authority. Authority brings hope. And what many of you need to do in this night, you must repent of your sin of not honoring authority. Because God strikes people that don't understand authority. And just because there was a few that misrepresented authority, doesn't mean everybody's like that. Ah, come on. So when I was in England, I can say again, I was just standing there minding my own business. Not really, I was praying for people, but you can ask, I, I was not close to people, but they fear. And, it, and I, I was like, hey, hey, I'm not going to hurt you. And true story, I'm back in South Africa, so I can say this now. There was, while I was busy praying for one girl to get her free, there was a lady standing next to me that taunted in the in the spirit she mocked god and i didn't i didn't touch her i just lift my hand like this just like that i just did that and then she freaked out and she said to the people that are there no we are i w i was hitting her i was like man there's cameras i didn't hit nobody and there was pastor eric was standing next to me pastor ryan was standing next I just lifted my hand. I didn't touch nobody. But what was busy happening is the authority in my life was dealing with the illegal authority and how the being of the human experienced it was torture. And so when I had a discussion with her, the demons talked to one another. I promise you. They call me in, they want to have a meeting because now we, we hit people. I'm like, I didn't hit nobody. So now I sit there, I sit like this, they talk, I listen. I look the girl in the eye. And I love her, I'm not nothing evil, I love her. So I smile, look at her. And now the demons become confused. This one talks to me, then that one talks, then this one talks. 
And then they are confused. They don't know what they want. I'm like, what do you want? They don't know. They just know they want to stay. I said to her, I can't help you if you want to stay with this stuff. But I can help you if you want to get relief from it. Because I am also a man under authority. And he has already given me the commission. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, proclaim the good news. So now the question is, do you want freedom? Are you there? Do you with me? And so, empower, listen to me tonight. To have God's approval means to have His authority. For you to have any form of power in your life means you have to honor. If you don't honor, nothing will work. And the worst that can happen is that the Son of God can stand in your midst and He will only cast out headaches. Because He came to His own and He could not heal no man because they did not understand authority. Are you with me? So tonight what I want to do is this. I'm going to prophesy now. I'm going to start to... We're going we're gonna to ask God. I'm going to prophesy. We're going to lay some hands. But this is what you need to make up in your heart. You have to make up in your heart that you will come under authority. Because, uh, let, let me say it like this. When I was in, again there, and I was, you know, just sleeping the night I... I I went to bed very late at night. These people, they, they, anyway, they work you. So they worked me. So I went to bed very late at night. And I, as I was going to bed, God said to me, don't put your phone where you normally put it. Put your phone next to you on your pillow because they're going to need you in the night. I said, who's going to need me, God? I'm in London. I don't have time. He said, they're going to need you. Your nation's going to need you in the night. Six minutes past 12, I get a phone call. They needed me in the night. Now I'm thinking to myself, if I don't listen to his voice, how will I, able to be, how will I be able to help? You see, my, God says this, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Can I say to you, hearing is not about speaking. It is about seeing. Let me say it again. Hearing is not about speaking. It's about seeing. Because when He speaks, He creates a sight. And as soon as He speaks, you can follow sight <laughs> if I would blindfold you right now and I will call your name you will come to the sound of my voice but I would have created for you a road by sight faith comes by hearing comes by so for us to walk in sight we need to be able to here. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go on another night. Have you learned some laws tonight? So, anyway, I, and I want to just share with you one more thing. So, out comes this, this these, these people, they, this lady, she, she sketched me, she was so kind. You know, still I think I look too old on that thing. But, I'm like, no, honey, this thing makes me look 40, and um, I'm younger, so please. But it was beautiful. But it was amazing for me to see once again how God can recognize people by hunger. And every person that was there that wanted God, He went to all of them. Every single one. 
And I can give you testimony on testimony. Like, for example, I, I don't want to tell too much because the people around the world, they w- listen to my podcast, so I can't tell you everything because they listen to what I'm saying. But I had a case there with this one lady. She came to me and she said, listen, I have this demonic problem. And she shared it with me and it was heavy. And I said, listen, honey, let me just go pray. Come back. And I will, because I, I felt in my spirit the access of that devil. Because you need to understand, Satan needs to have legal authority to torture. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I said to her, listen, I see, I said, I see something when you were, I see this. I said, she said, no, nothing like that happened. I said, okay, let me go pray. I prayed. God told me it's that. I came back to her. I said to her, honey, you might not know it, but this happened. I tell you the truth. I said, so let's test it. Let me pray for it. Let me cast it out and then we see. She said, okay, I believe you to be a prophet, so go for it. So I prayed, laid my hands, cast it out. Got a text just now the other day. We just came back. No, no more symptoms, gone. And it made me think that there's many things that the devil attacks you with. You, didn't, you don't even know you've given him right. <laughs> That's why you need the prophet so much. Because they are the ones that will show it out to you. Are you there? Let me give you another one. As a, I'm going to prophesy to you now, I'm just making you hungry. So, because the Bible says hunger births hunger. So, are you there? So, what I want to say. Oh, the, a young couple comes out. And they, they ask me, oh, all these young people, they ask me this question. They say, uh, should we get married? I look at them, God says to me, no. So now I say nothing. So I I say, okay, God, what should I do? The Lord says to me this, and all young, if you are here tonight and you want to prophesy over couples, let me help you. When I do that, I always will turn my back on the one and prophesy to the one as a separator. Then I'll turn my back And speak to the other one. Why? Because whatever God has put his back to, he has not agreed with. Okay. Laws of the Spirit. If you are hungry tonight, I'm full of fire. I've prayed the whole day. I've enjoyed Jesus today. He was so good. I had, you know, I'm thinking to myself, why don't people talk to God why don't they spend time in prayer? Because he's such a good conversationist. He likes to talk. He calls himself the word. So that thing that you guys do, word man, that's Jesus. He likes the word. So if you talk to him, he will talk to you. And he will tell you things that you do not know. <laughs> and you become a man under authority. So I want to pray tonight and I want to start to pray for people, but I, I first want to prophesy. So there we are. Can, can the band, can you come back? I'm done. Can the band come back? I need to preserve my voice here, but tonight I want to prophesy. Is that okay? And we want to lay some hands and I'm going to pray for you for the infilling of God's power to come tonight upon you. Is that okay? Do you want of God's power? Yes, we want it. We can ask, this is the one thing, listen, you can ask God power again and again and again. You can ask for more. But authority, you need to live. (laughs) He's not going to give that. You have to live that out. And you're going to suffer for that, but, 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 the reward is eternity. It's eternity. And my friends, I promise you, in the viewpoint of eternity, everything is worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> so, what I want us to do is right now, I want us to stand. And we're going to, with the band, they are almost done. Um, I don't know what they did, but anyway. We, will not you lift the keys to me? And there we stand. I want us to lift our hands to start. And there we ask. I want to, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come in.
going to ask him to come and enlighten upon you and call you out and prophesy tonight and lay hands, heal the sick. Father, in this night, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your authority. I thank you that you are with me. I thank you in this night that you bring a separator between the things that man has planned and the things that you have commissioned. In this night, God, I thank you for your power and your authority. And Lord, I pray over my friends in this night that they themselves will start to cry out for the Lord to be filled with a greater measure of that which you were filled by. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. We want to encourage you to be a part of all our other live streams that happen in the week. That's Sunday morning, Sunday evening, as well as our service on Tuesday evening. Be a part of the movement and the family that is empowered. You know what we always say? You online are as much a part of the family as the guys here on this campus. So follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook, and all you have to do is search for Empower Church Maine and be a part of that movement. On YouTube, make sure to also search for Empower Church and click the subscribe button. Make sure you get notified the moment there's any special videos that get uploaded onto our YouTube page. We also want to hear about any testimonies that you might have. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. Share them with us because this is what we call home victories. Our answered prayer for you is a celebration for us. So send us an email at testimony at empowerchurch.co.za. If you've been impacted by this ministry in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially and help us continue delivering God's Word all around the world. All you have to do is visit www.empowerchurch.co.za and find the giving option that works best for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go and live the empowered life.